All right. So, so which uh, map are they are they starting on? What did Magical decide on this time? Magical, Lissette Lost Province. Ah oh, darn, unfortunate. But it's okay. Yeah, people find it rough to play on the <laughs> rough yeah. to play outside of Lost Province. Partly out of habit, partly because the map is so open, so many paths to attack and defend. Makes it a bit rough sometimes. A little bit. Who is on what matchup we'll end up with? Scruffy, always going to keep it up with Magical's favorite has been Mala, historically, but he plays a bit of everything as well. I'm actually really curious what Mala... Because we haven't seen a lot of Mala in a while, and I mean, Zul did get some buffs. And I've noticed... I mean, granted, partly because of the smaller player base, that players seem to just, like, pick one uh, immortal of whatever faction. So we see Orzum if someone plays Karath. We see either Mala or Zol if someone plays Aru. Like, across the board. Yeah. I'm okay. curious what... Like, if we have Ajari players in the wings we just haven't seen yet. Hmm. Or... It'd be fun Zolf to see some players, players or what? Okay, that's. I mean, I really do enjoy Sapari play or Warden play, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of those. But I think we'll see more of those once we have the third immortal, or you know, there's going to be two immortals that have those units versus now there's only one and one, so there's not as much differentiation between unique units and units that only one immortal has because they were replaced by elite versions. So that's going to be a really fun change coming up once, uh, you know, once beta. That'll, yeah, that'll be probably on beta. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah, so those of you not familiar with the development plan, currently we're in Alpha. Alpha is planned to continue for the remainder of the year. Throughout it, there we're probably going to have some early Jora, maybe some stuff for Azplan and Resh, the other two, the other Ara Aru and Karatha Mortal. And then the idea is when Beta starts, that's when we have Jora, and I believe also three Immortals for each faction, oh, rather yeah. than just two, because three is oh, meant yeah. to be the baseline. Yeah, you really do need three, right? Because if you replace base units with elite units, and there's only two, well, okay, then one guy has the elite ones, the other one has the normal ones, and they're both really... Yeah, they both just have different units. You don't see the differentiation of those elite units as much. Oh, yeah, looking forward to that. Oh, oh wait, let's see a kitty cam. Hello, kitty. He's hungry, so he doesn't want to stay with me. <laughs> Does he ever? I mean, my cat is just being, like patiently waiting for me to do something. Hmm. I don't know what he's waiting for. Andre, are you? Hey. No, he's just waiting. No, he's, waiting he's just waiting for me. Yep. Doesn't know. Doesn't know what's what's going on. It's like why why are you just hanging out? What like, can you can you pay attention to me? Hey, oh, events manager. That's even the current title. Okay. Okay, I'm still going to call him Master of Competition because I believe in the mastery of Simus and all those things. And you know, I mean, it's like Master of Ceremonies. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see Just... Tempo, and I hope he makes great songs. I, I'd have to relink like some of the songs. I think he did. Uh, do you remember the song Wave and Flag from like 2010 or something from nope. the World Cup? No, darn. Why is he made like a parody song of When I'm Grandmaster with that song, which was really great. Uh -huh. I'm hoping he makes some songs like that that keep coming up and you know if he if he has time for that i know he's musically inclined on top of being just a great streamer and being really fun all around it'll be fun to to have to have in the community oh and simu's coming in with the facts that he's not coming in for real yet oh no wait there will be a ladder eventually but not yet yeah we don't i assume the with the ladder there's been a lot of discussion possibly about which way the ladder could go i wouldn't be surprised the ladder is going to be something different. I don't know what it'll end up being, but don't be surprised if the ladder isn't what you're used to. Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah, how about your fighting games? Let's go back to your fighting You said there's one that's like lobbies for like 10 people coming to a lobby. Was that you that was talking about that? Oh, well, that's normal. Like, most fighting games have like 8 people oh, yeah. to a lobby, and then it's just you play with the people there. At Arc System game, Arc System work games, what they'll typically do is have a bunch of people, or have They'll have world lobbies, which are basically 32-ish player lobbies that are just, you go in, it's like this big sort of mini MMO type thing where you just walk around. Or it's almost like a, I don't know how to like describe it. It's type of thing, it's not really a game, it's just a, a lobby, you can, a little avatar that walks around. So it's, I'm, I think it's like chat programs that do this. Anyway, 
so it's that, and then there's little sta little stations around the whole area where you can go with another player and then play the game. It's like a little arcade. It's like a virtual arcade in just a system. And then you also okay. have your own private lobbies that do the same thing. And then what you're talking about ladder is that with Guilty Gear Strive, they integrated the two so that you have the tower, which essentially is a series of 32, well, of rooms that are instanced of 32 players each. Each of them is assigned to a different level from 1 to 10, as well as a level on top of everything called Celestial. And the idea is that as you win or lose matches, you then, your rating goes up or down, and you can play any lobby above your rating, but not below your rating. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah so, you, so that's you a completely different system. It is a little bit controversial by the player base, mostly because there's some connection issues. <laughs> but also the actual game itself is a little bit I'm really looking forward to different. seeing different types of way of doing it, right? Like you said, that's one way of doing it, but as you said, we we don't know. They could go for the StarCraft models. It's like, yeah, you have a ladder, and yeah, you just play as many games as you want. Uh, but then there's the controversy of, like, ladder anxiety of, like, okay, it's just scary to go against people and not be able to communicate. And that's, well that's what again. they've talked about, is, like, that yeah. ladder anxiety is a big deal, and they want to avoid that being a thing. So that is probably going to be, again, an area of active research of how to improve the overall experience so that players don't get ladder anxiety yep well in any case we're in the winner's final in the top left playing as mala in the blue it is magico meteor magico i guess he joined a new clan or something on the bottom right it is a scruffy playing as orzu in the red see is, is meteor an upgrade or a downgrade from star because he used to be star well you I know the like stars no it's, it's a shooting star either way it's uh I, both of them you can see in this guy all right we'll okay. go with that I like both. Uh, Meteor's going everywhere, and uh, and I, I'm sure at some point in history, people thought that meteors were just falling stars, right? So he he just went from right. being at the top of the world, and now he comes back down to Earth, getting ready to uh, meet the mortals and fight us out everywhere he can. Well, that's certainly considerate of him. Mm -hmm. yeah, staying away from that cloud, from that uh, from that sky, that that night sky, going around and just staying there and looking down upon us. Magico is ready to fight us and get proxy. And Scruffy fight. has no respect for that whatsoever. Going for the proxy legion all right by this nearby ridge. Yeah, Scruffy okay. has been playing a lot. This is the first time Scruffy plays in a 1v1 tournament, uh, but mostly because of time constraint, he just wasn't available. So Scruffy has something to show, right? He, he's been playing a lot. He's been one of the better play testers that, that just didn't have the time to play tournaments. This is his first one, and he want going with a grand hurrah. Okay. He's coming in and proxy and Magico. So what I like about this in particular or liked because Magical clued in, is that Pro Scruffy realized that Magical will scout once the left side and then the right side. So they put their proxy on the left side, thinking that, and correctly, that the teapot would go over to the other side of the na hmm. of the center area, which it did. But then it clearly Magical clued in that something was up because they saw, well, there's nothing building in the base. There's no or nothing building in the base over here. Like, the Legion has got to be somewhere. There's nothing else building. So they, they clued in, figured it out, but I really like the fact that Scruffy thought far enough ahead about where the scout, my opponent's scouting pattern is, and therefore where their teapot is going to go. You know, it's great because we, we do know that Magico and Scruffy have played a lot recently, and okay, making sure that teapot doesn't steal the thunder here. And gets a teapot kill out of it, so that's great. The next teapot won't come for another 30 seconds. That's a lot of vision lost from Magico's side. That being said, same vision has been lost for Scruffy, as the Masked Hunters are coming from Magical. Scruffy will get the Pyro Advantage. They have enough for a Pillar. They don't have enough for a second set of Zentari quite yet. And that first set, well, he it's going to have to work hard to defend Legion Hall. Yeah, he doesn't need it. He can just come in here and Magical needs to run right away. He don't want to fight Zentari's with range. Uh, and Ma he might just get Zentaria with range pretty soon. Magical won't go for his third base quite that fast. He knows that. He needs to pump up his units up because this push is coming strong. I had a reliquary just in case. The Legion Hall is done. Are we going to get Zephyr Zentari? We are looking like we're going to get Zephyr Zentari. And that's a lot of mass hunters. And at this point, Magical has enough, especially with an infuse. He doesn't have enough for infuse, though. He can just come up, try to do as much damage. Well, Zentari already. And here comes the pillar. He Defensive wants to defend this. Defensive pillar. Okay, we're not going to get a pillar push, but we are going to get the third. They're going to try to hold the third. It's not happening. Too many mass Hunters. This is not possible as Magical takes out the proxy. Oh, and takes that's, that's... out the pillar as well. 
So we do need to mention how expensive those Legion Halls are. Legion Halls double supply in Immortal. So losing that means that he needs to rebuild one to be able to build more units. It's, uh, it's more expensive than it looks. He's, he's going to have to cost another yeah, 250 it's two. Yeah, it's two yeah. and a half Zentari worth of cost. You need to rebuild that entirely before even building the first Zentari. It's really expensive. So Magical needs to... It will capitalize on this. Magical's preparing for a big timing attack. It's coming. It's all about Scruffy defending that because... Nope. Well... No. Well. No. Well, that's going to happen sometimes, and unfortunately it happens here when Magical was in a huge lead. Scruffy. Ah, uh, well, sorry. I mean, it depends on what they decide, because if the players agree that one of them was in a disadvantaged position or can't win... Yeah, no, if, then... players, decide, if players decide that it was a loss, uh, like, Scruffy coming back from that would have been a miracle. Let's, uh, okay, let's I think they're deciding... There, okay, Magical has been judged to have won that game. So we're going to be moving on to the next game without any fuss. Yeah. Fuss, thank it, you, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, looking at that game, the reason why is he used all his power on that pillar and he had that proxy and none of them came to anything. It was such a big commitment. And when you get nothing out of it, don't even kill that many of your opponent's units. Uh, yeah, he was dead in water. It's it's a dark... It could have taken a few more minutes for Magical to come with his big push. Uh, but... But oh. Magical would have figured something out. I mean, Magical would have just come up with a big timing push of any type he wants. I'm... Yeah, that's the thing. It really is... Magical had a huge advantage. I'm honestly surprised we didn't get just 8 Zentari. Because normally you have 8 Zentari Pillar. That is the push. Yep. The but... Push we've seen. It's not... Like I said, look like they were going for Zephyr Zentari, which is a bit of a safer kind of mid-game play. It's just that that wasn't what Scruffy was setting up. And we're and going case... to be, for the first time this tournament on stream, playing on Fool's Bay! And just a small update on the tournament. On the lower side of the bracket, Santa lost to Outfox. Outfox Wait, not getting... what? Yep, Outfox not losing uh, the sleep, uh, the lack of sleep did not disturb him. He just beat Santa, who was the second seed of his tournament. And on the other side, Flicky making it through as well. Uh, exciting times for these players. Congratulations to both of you. Santa is no joke. Yep. And Flicky making it through again, so Flicky improving on his score from last time, going far again. Had a had a tough run going into Magical and might meet him again in the finals. It'll be interesting in the losers finals later on. We'll be covering after this after this uh match is over. Yeah, there there's no way around that. We are absolutely covering yeah. losers finals. That oh. is that is how tournaments work. <laughs> Winners finals, losers finals, grand finals. Those are those happy run in that order. Yeah, it would be weird to do it in another order, right? It would be impossible, actually. <laughs> no, no, you just need some time travel. It's not because time travel is impossible. That's impossible. No, you just, you have the losers finals play mm -hmm. just solo, and if they play the solo game really well, better than their opponent would have played the solo game, then they win. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay, that's that's a way to do it. Yeah. Oh, they, so they can run losers finals before winners finals. Did they add like dandelions at the top? Well, you know, in the. Oh, all the good. white, all, all white, all the white. No, no, just in the grass. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of white in the grass now. I think that Laura might be some grass. Sort. It's oh, some kind of flower, yeah. Well, I had a lot of lightning on it. Lots, a lot of flowers. I like it. It's white grass. Mm. Yeah, it looks, it looks yeah. pretty. This, this map. I, that's why I like seeing this map. It is, it's a cool design map because it got the double expansion thing kind of set up at the start. And it's which at is, night. And it's at My night, which always makes things look cool because. They have the great contrast of moonlight and whatever else is on the ground, and just the darkness of night. As yeah, this map is my favorite. Oh yeah, and just gameplay wise as well, having the two paths attack that are so separate compared to the other maps, uh, especially especially Lost Province is really the center. There's two paths kind of, but the center is just so prominent. Here the center is a bit blocked off, so you don't see the fights happening until the ancients are there, and when the ancient does pop up, ooh, that's in, that's when the fun really happens. You get 100 pyre if you kill that first time, and then it goes up by 50 each time. Yeah. It's like 10 minutes in the ancient pops up, and then every 5 minutes thereafter. Yep. And both players want to collect that 100 pyre, because that's free infuse. And if both players are fighting there, another, another proxy, but this time coming from Magical. Oh, yeah, because we're, we're, it should be worth pointing out. Magical is now playing Orism as Scruffy has switched to Mala. Yeah, Scruffy I... playing a, a pretty standard fast expand tech build. Yep. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Magical's going for proxy. 
And it's interesting, as we, Scruffy has been playing mostly Orzum, but lately he's been switching it up and going for some Mala. I'm quite happy to see him try off his uh, his second faction, showing off what he can do with both of them. Has a lot of the trans a lot of the skills are transitionary, so you, you can learn more than one. Pretty Especially well. between Mala and Orzum, because they both are very territory control focused. Oh. Like if you if you like building up an economy and having army having an army you can just kind of slowly push into your opponent's base, both of those immortals do that fairly well. Mm. Here comes the Zentari. So the thing is, Magical will be a bit disappointed as opponent didn't take the normal natural. I call it the normal one because in this game you get more resource at your at your natural. You get yeah. Oh yeah, it's uh. Yeah, you can see right there. Yes, six thousand on the natural and three six hundred and anything else. Yeah, exactly. So taking but that one, the way the first one is designed. Usually, yeah, that's yeah. So often you'll take that one, but you can take any expansion really. Uh, maybe at some point they'll they'll make that. A different way where any second base you take that can be very weird if you take uh, your natural into your opponent's place for whatever reason. Is that magical just coming in for some light harass? And very annoying light harass. But the Bastion is here. The Bastion deals some damage and. Think he lost a symbiote or will lose one if he keeps going in? They did lose a symbiote. Oof. But they can bait the Zentari in. Then they can defend the proxy reasonably. Oh, that's a lot of symbiotes going down. And Scruffy going for a counter attack, though. At the same time, Scruffy doing some counter damage. So Magical can't control both perfectly. And Zentari with the Hallowed Ground do a lot of damage to Mass Hunters. Mass Hunters need to run. More Mass Hunters back home just to deal, deal with whatever Zentari may come from that proxy, which is currently none. All the Zentari being built are being built to defend. So Scruffy's counter attack did its job question of how much resources they both lost we saw scruffy lose quite a bit of workers even though they have a lot of damage output and they don't have that much hp so losing them is pretty dangerous scruffy going for a lot of mass hunters which is a standard neuroside as well to get that very quick uh offering offering giving them an extra movement boost in the, fir the first three attacks do extra damage in exchange for a bit of hp and so. that's all they're building from the looks of it they don't have any clear sign. They have God Art coming up, so they will have changes to the tech. But for now, a lot of Masked Hunters build up what they can. Use that to control space as best as possible. Getting the tower on the west side as well. Uh, making it harder for his opponent to jump in there because, oh, it happened once and he doesn't want to let it happen again. You can yeah. kind of guess your opponent has that, uh, that, that path attack ready to go again. Ooh, freeze efforts. Yeah, completely com normal, uh, normal opening. I mean, it really is. Magical Zentari Zephyr is, apart from the proxy, that is actually pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? The Zephyrs got nerfed, but doesn't change the meta too much. People still like the Zentari Zephyrs. And sometimes oh. that's what's interesting about strategy games is people are just used to doing a thing, so they'll do it even if it feels weaker. It wasn't, like, it wasn't the biggest nerf hammer we've ever seen, so it wasn't It wasn't. Bad. It was, It was like, maybe a 10% reduction in damage. It was, wasn't it was some 10, 15%. It was... I have to double check. Maybe it was a little bit higher, but it wasn't that. Actually, it was close to you know, 15, 20%. You're right. It was a little bit. It was not insignificant. But it was more a matter of, you know, Zephyrs have their role. Their role yep. is dealing with, is being flex. They can deal with anything, but they can't deal with any particular thing as well as a dedicated unit could. Yeah, and Scruffy really had been showing off how powerful he was with the Zephyrs. He was just massing them all, time, all day, every day. It was working so well for him, so can't really fault him and he's already building some static d in his in his main base so he's played magical and magical is great at his harass so i like that from his side getting that to omnivore there uh, we'll probably end up building something here and going for resonance resonance so a very mass hunter meat and potato type of build with just a very strong straightforward attack building your siege units that just want to set up and keep attacking into your opponent they do see that Magical's going for heavy Legion Hall tech. That is their primary approach. That being said, we do have the Angelarium up. I expect Scepters will be coming up shortly, as I see no particular tech other than that. And two Angel yeah, two Angelaria. Probably Scepters or just directly into Thrones. Yep. Thrones or even Sharu. Sharu still have their plays despite being very expensive. Actually, no, he won't go for Sharu that early. It's way too early for those. No, they don't have the Ether for it. Yeah, you need about four bases worth of Ether to go to those super powerful units. They're worth it, but uh, not at the expense of your whole army because you need a bit of everything. Magical's really planning to attack from the west side, so and that's good for Scruffy. He's been keeping an eye on, on everything. Here come the resonance walking forward. All red on this side. 
Yeah, I got the team color and you got the, I guess, apparently red resonant base color. Yeah. And Actually, I haven't the seen push. the red resonance yet, so this is pretty exciting from an art perspective. Okay. It, it's exciting to me because I like the resonance and how they look, and it's just the animations are really cool, and it's just cool to see it, even in this untextured format. You see when they shoot, shoot like when they're siege dub, they shoot both at the same time. When they're shooting one at a time, it's like one arm, then the next arm. But the Wonder Siege up is like a big shot every time, I think. And there we go, they're sieging up. Yeah. Pillar coming down, and here we go, the big shot's coming for Resonance. The Pillar comes down, bringing out the DPS, but does Magical have enough? That's a big army, and the Resonance deals so much damage from the back lines. Magical going to focus fire down the first one, the second one's still alive. Dealing heavy, heavy damage. It's going in at ri a great risk to itself. The Mass Hunters being there to body block. And they're in. The Resonance is deployed. Damage is real, and the pillar is only going to be so effective as you the boats go to the Mass Hunters <laughs> Mass Hunters are going too close to that pillar, and like the pillar gives extra DPS on every unit. And on top of that, they, they had the, the tower to attack, so that is only the resident left can do a bit more damage, but it'll be going down very quickly with all those units there. Uh, so, decent push from Scruffy, honestly. Like, he did set a lot was, of damage. It was. They got rid of quite a few units. They got rid of an entire mode line. So yeah. they didn't get nothing for it. It was absolutely valuable. And he but... expanded behind it. So and they, you know, Okay, that's the biggest thing. They did expand behind it. Given all that, I'd say it's probably a wash. The fact they got an expansion means that they're able to keep pace. Yeah. We look at the army value, though. Match goes still slightly ahead with... Uh, yeah, he, he, he he's decently ahead at this point. He'd like to be a bit more than that. Uh, but Scruffy is not out of this at all. He's going to get a bit more fire here, and he's very far ahead on pyro count, at least. I mean, it's almost defensive, if you think about it. Because if Magil gets Pyre, they get another pillar. Yeah. And Scruffy does get things like Rain of Blood or Infuse or even Blood Wells to set up. But none of those are quite as terrifying as their opponent having the ability to just drop a pillar. Hmm. Oh, also worth noting, Scruffy did go for fourth base. A little yeah. bit hidden. I don't... Do they see it? Yeah, he's going to see it from the back here, at the very uh, least. He's, he's gonna maybe, go maybe. Depends on their positioning. He's going a lot if he does that. And no, I, he does not. Oof. I don't think so. Oh, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. It looks like they didn't. Yeah, so four bases. I think Magical also has his fourth base in the same position on the opposite side. Not up quite yet, though. That's going to be a good way for Scruffy to come back into this game. Uh, being down on army value, getting that economy up means he can get more units quicker. And we see those Red Sears, uh, Dread Sisters up for his army as well to really reinforce uh, whatever push he wants to go for. Makes me wonder what air... It is Sharu, you are right. They are definitely going for a fair few Sharu. Double Angelarm, maybe he was worried about Frums coming in, but once you see the Resonance, you know Frums are not really an issue because you don't have that much Shifu to go for both Resonance and Frums. To have them both be affected. And see, is, is this going to be some type of base raid? Both of them losing a base? Because they're both going to their opponent's base, and there's nothing really in position. The Pillar comes down, and Scruffy backs out of his base immediately. He doesn't want to defend this. I don't think they were expecting that, actually. Scruffy, having deployed when they did, clearly they are expecting to be attacked, or defended, rather. Not going to happen, though. Losing their natural. Same time, taking out the defenses around Scruffy's natural, around meters, matters natural. These Sharu coming in here, and oh. it's going down. 250 Ether for nothing. Well, for a base, I suppose. But that's about it. The main base getting heavily attacked. Angel is going down before it comes up. Rain, Rain of, of blood, blood popping as well, just to allow for more offerings, to allow for more damage, to allow for the defense to be a little bit stronger, as well as these forces from Magical are now realizing they have to fall back. There is no advance. Just lost the ability to make Hallowers. May soon lose the ability to make... Will soon lose the ability to make Sharu. Now Troll's taking some damage, but it will not be down before, defenders, before Magical's defenses come back to help. And now it comes down to, what does Magical want to defend from? Can he catch Scruffy? Because Scruffy doesn't want to lose these units. Those are expensive units. Resonant still at the at the ramp. A few units coming in, but the Omnivore was here forever. Still defense. And Magical comes into his own natural to defend. Uh, Resonant was sieged up, but it's only one Resonant. Taken out pretty quickly. And that's the expensive unit of this push. There's still some Dread Sisters. But at this point, uh, Scruffy's a bit, he's a bit stuck. And that Town Hall might go down, though. That's an expensive loss. You don't want to lose your main so fast. Scruffy's got to make sure to focus. There they go. Drop him. And Empire broken last second, but too little too late as it goes down. And Scruffy loses his army, though, behind this. That's How an army they... for... An army and a base for a base. How Magical has definitely gained the advantage. That tr that base trade was worth it for Magical. 
how quickly can you remake? At least Gruffy had his third base fully mining, or well, had, had it set up a, much quicker than Magical, so we'll see how it ends up going at this point. Uh, he need, Scruffy needs to retake that base as it does mine for much longer than other ones as well. And going forward, and that's actually a decent army for uh, Scruffy. That's a surprisingly terrifying army. Michael. The only reason there's the only reason there's a fight is because Magical has the Magi here that are making hollowed ground. I mean, if, the if Scruffy goes snipe, one of them gets sniped. The one making the hollow ground is one's making the hollow ground still up. Scruffy doesn't even care. They're just getting rid of the Zentari directly. Magi go down last. And Scruffy able to win this fight, take the Army Valley advantage back in their favor. And again, yeah, the, the players are still pretty even on economy. So yeah, this no. is this is a wash. We've seen Scruffy get back into an even position. Yeah, that was a great fight from Scruffy. He had a, he had a decent arc on his opponent. And Magical just didn't have enough units there to really contend. And the biggest thing is, Magical, like Scruffy's army there was only, it was only alloy only sync. It was alloy sync and he traded that for Efer units. That's what's really expensive here. You want to trade Efer for Efer, not Efer for alloy. And yeah, Scruffy's point, got a thousand Ether in reserve. Oh yeah, he can build a lot of expensive units. And his resins are the ones here. They are sieged up already. He's jumping on it on top of it. Dresses are putting down some Efer moss and Magical GG's out of the game. Scruffy evening out the series. Yeah. Very well played. So we see both players went for both factions so far. So let's see. Magical going back to Lost Province. Key is uh, ready to rumble on that final map. They are. Yep. This is This is it. Game three. Whoever wins this gets the advantage in the grand finals. Whoever loses this goes to the loser's bracket to fight the winner of Flicky and Outfoxed. Yep. And they'll have a chance to come back into this and to get the best of five against the same opponent if they make it through. But we've seen Fox, uh, Flicky and Fox have both proven worthy opponents, getting down some very strong opponents on their way here. So we'll see uh, who ends up fighting who in that losers uh, losers final. Matt already ready to get up and running. All right. Magical on Orzum, Scruffy on Orzum. They both go Orzum. And. The question is fast expand? Proxy? Proxy expand? Oof. Fast expand. No, yeah, fast expand, expand for Scruffy. For both. Okay, you have double fast expand. You know, in Orzum or, or, or Zoom Mirror, I kind of expand the fast expand. There are some good builds, but you can usually scout them out and just react to it instead. And both of them feel content going for very standard or as standard as it goes for this matchup. Expo, Ether. Are we going to get a Legion Hall on the tower, or are we going to get into the main base, or are we just going to get double Ether? That's the that's the choice as far as I'm concerned. Legion yeah, Hall moat. Again, Frontland is always like getting it near the choke has always been a fun thing, just because you get a you get like that that hollow ground at the entrance of your base. So if someone tries to go into your choke, he can't really. Uh, Scruffy going for the one near his tower, and on Magical side, where does he place his? Probably the same. No, but he's Note a bit delayed down. on his opponent, so went for a second E for faster than Scruffy. But yeah, they won't change all that much. We are yeah. looking at well, a macro game. Probably yep. going to be a 15 minute at least game between the two players. Well, we never know. We say that, but Magical has his timing You're right. well planned You're out. Right. Magical really has his timing planned out. We're talking about Killer Instinct. Magical's the player that has it so far. And it's worth noting, you know, you get that, uh, you get the Legion Hall, you could get fast Soul Foundry, fast Absolvers. They did get the faster double ether. Yeah, Absolver Push is not some is something I'm still curious about. I still want to see how well it works in the dispatch with, uh, as you said, their upgrade against Zentari. But in this matchup, it seems people like to go for Zentari for Absolver uh, for uh, for a lot of Zephyrus pretty quickly and double Legion Hall from Magico. And what's coming up for Scruffy for his second building? Wait, did he go for the second Legion Hall before making any units as well? Magical yep. did, yes. Oh, okay, interesting. You, okay, that's going to be a pretty strong timing push, I think. You can get your units so much faster and you can really head out for a quick push. Only two Zentari as well, so this this is leading me to a lot of Zephyrs coming out quickly. Just the two to get that early Pyre up and, run, uh, early pyre up and running. And behind this, okay, no and the Reliquary question is, where's yet. the Reliquary? Or anything else for that matter? What is Magical doing? What is it keeping in reserve? Are they two going for the rocks? Or maybe a no. Are they going for the har they're going with the harass? That's what it is. Going into the natural expansion, oh, dealing okay. some damage in the natural. It has clearly been scouted. Scruffy yeah, something. realizing something is up, and we'll go back to defend a couple of moats. 
have to for are forced not to mine. They will they live? They might live. Yeah, they'll definitely. Yeah, they're gonna live. Yeah, this is something been a lot mining time. This is something Magico has been playing a lot with in the last few weeks, actually. Uh, maybe the last month or so, he's really been splitting up his uh, his entire going into his opponent's mains because there's nothing really to defend there. There's no tower that comes out early enough to defend the whole moat line. So mm. you get some nice harassing in. You don't get to get the power control, but your opponent is forced to go back, and that's how you get power control just a bit later than you want it that you usually see. But I say they do, however, you... still get the power control and push their opponent to make a tower. That's 50 pyre that they wouldn't otherwise have, which means Magical now has 8 Zentari with a pillar on deck. And the tower is not well positioned, as you said, and yeah, Magical is ready for this push. He is coming in strong with his 8 Zentari. The eight, four more Zentari are coming in for Scruffy, but how quick are they coming? And I've got about, looks like, 10 seconds maybe before they're done. But There's the pillar. the pillar. Ooh, the There's Zentari. The, just, the timing could have been a bit better than that as... Scruffy comes in with everything, wants to defend, has a huge arc on his opponent. Magical has the bonus from that pillar, but that pillar comes to nothing. Magical no. knows when he's toast. Those units came out just in the nick of time for Scruffy. Oof. The painful thing about that pillar is that the way it was placed, it was just, it was too close because there was nowhere Magical could kite to and maintain Zentari advantage. Yeah, if that pillar had come just, I, I mean, if those units had come out just a few seconds faster, Magical would not have placed it there, but the timing just worked out so perfectly for Scruffy. It was... Immaculate. Now Scruffy's basically just got free reign. They can do whatever they want. Go for Pyre oh. of their own. Go for Pillar Push of their own if they want to. Granted, defenses are coming up. Zephyrs are coming up. And Assault hey, Battery is up as well. Yeah, you Magical know, didn't go could. for an early third with that. So Magical's units are coming in quickly. He didn't lose that many units in that push. He mostly lost the Pyre from that. He didn't lose that many units, so it's not the end of the world. We even look at the army yeah. value. Magical's ahead with 48 supply as well, so he has an extra production building on top of everything. And their pyre is reasonably close to even. Scruffy is going to be able to get a pillar if they take this pyre. Magical, are they going to stop them? No, they're not. They're no. not quite close enough. Scruffy's got a pillar on deck. Yeah, Magical, Magical. didn't have quite enough there. And oh, getting a free unit kill is always nice. Get one. Yep, one free unit kill. Second unit kill. One, he loses two. Zentari, though. Uh, it's not free anymore. I yeah, know, he lost two Zentari. He's going to lose both his Zentari. As long and as he doesn't lose his Zephyrus, it's fine. Don't seem to have Winstep yet. Ooh, he does lose his first effort. That's the painful part. Uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of ether. Uh, this is Magi coming in though. Magi are coming to help out, and we're getting otherwise a, sp a speed run to the Angelarium. Yeah, so so far it's been very very much on two bases. None. We often see the third base coming on around five minutes, and okay, this time it's at six thirty. It's not coming in quite as early as they've been teching up to getting more and more units. Both have been fairly aggressive with each other. But now the Zephyrs are out. You can't keep kiting back and forth as Magical knows he'll get shot if he tries anything. And that one Zephyr is solo, but survives and can go back to his own tower to heal up. And Magical... They have the healers. They have they have enough pyre for their own purposes. They do grab it as well! Uh, that's last such a magical second play. steal. Such a magical play. He's, we've seen him doing it so often, just come in and get the power at the last moment. But his units got very weak, and at this point, Scruffy comes in. His units are full HP. Double pillar coming out for both sides. The counter pillar really to defend this. And here it comes. The push is coming for Scruffy. He has a nice, nice arc, but so does Magical, plus the tower at the back. Plus the Magi. Yeah, the force multiplier can make a big difference here, but the numbers, the numbers seem to be for Scruffy as Magical's un units come from the back. I want them to come from the fore come and help the army at this point, and Scruffy's splitting up his army as well. well. That split means... Actually, they're getting distracted. They're getting pushed away. So no yeah. harassment for Scruffy, while Magical's able to reduce the amount of forces protecting the pillar, meaning the pillar is going to go down. And yeah, this fight goes all Magical's way. Scruffy seems to have lost a lot of units in that fight, and even his harass is, was scouted by Magical, and Magical reacts perfectly here, bringing his units up and defending this. Not even losing one of the Zentaris. Well, Scruffy loses two of them. Expensive units to lose, even though they're only alloy. And that Behind means this? magical. Magical is even things out. Scruffy, Scruffy had the advantage from the last fight going their way. Magicals managed to get themselves back on track. The well, for now, oh, yeah, that's it's a big hard to tell. That's such a big oh. army for Scruffy. Magical will lose a lot of units here, and that's how Scruffy came back into this game. Look at the army so value going down, and that's units. not the end of those units. So many E3 units. I think all their Magi went down, too. That's been rebuilt. It's a loss, though. You don't you don't want to lose the Magi if you can help it. Yeah, 
and here comes that Scruff. He has a nice position on his opponent. Uh, doesn't want to engage too perfectly. There's an arc coming in for Magico, and that's how you can get so many units to shoot while only a few of your opponents can. There's not enough pyre at this point for more pillars. Magico still has the defensive pillar there to help out. Magico is very close to getting enough pyre for offensive pillars if they want to. That could turn the tide in the fight. That's a that's the joy of uh, Orzum vs Orzum. You never know who's gonna win up the next fight. They all have a lot of zephyrs and great micro can decide every single fight. But you know numbers don't lie sometimes, and their numbers are pretty equivalent. Magical's main advantage being the economy. At the moment, they have fully mining three bases, while Scruffy only just got their third up. Magical also has a pirate advantage, getting the miner as well as having gotten pretty much entirely the center for the for the pirate flames means Magical's going to have Pillar. They're going to have Infuse. They're going to have the ability to drop towers as well if they'd like. Well, it, all comes down to the, it all comes down to any fight they want to take. Going up the hill is always a big disadvantage. And Magical will lose absolutely nothing. Good pullback at the right moment. They spotted the tower. They are getting their own tower, so they know it's going to be happening in the southwest. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, I like that for Magical. You really want to see if your opponent tries to go for some type of run by at that side. As they both seem to be good at multitasking and not to. Release on units everywhere. So one thing I'm noticing is that Scruffy seems to be going for tech a little bit slower than Magical is. In Magical, they have the Angelaria up, they have their they have the House of the Fading Saints up. She's Scruffy on their hand enough. focusing entirely on Zephyrs, so Magical, if they can hold the line reasonably well, they might just be able to turn that tech advantage into a win. Yeah, those timing attacks with the tech coming in, it's depending on which units, and at this point, he used this pillar there. It's a defensive pillar, making sure his opponent doesn't come in there. Scruffy needs to find another angle, but the fight's still ongoing. They're still fighting for the pirate there. I'm not quite sure who took that one. I think it's yeah, magical, magical again stealing it. Yeah. Little little sparks that go up are team colored, so it was blue. Oof. Magical never ending, stealing a power. And the Dervish are coming out ready to harass. We've said before, we haven't seen Dervish quite as much as before. But they're still great at harassing coming in. Three of them is a number to kill one moat. This is tough. Magicals, they got the Centauri, which do have the damage if they can get their range. But yeah, that's a big if. Even with the Magi, you're stuck in a spot when you when you deploy the Magi for that. So it's, it's a thing. You can do it. Yeah, both of them going for their fourth phase. And your prediction's coming true. This game is going to be at least 15 minutes for sure. It's a macro game. No big timing push that, that ended up killing up the opponent despite magical. trying with magical. Any Hallowers coming in? Ooh, no, there are down. not. The House of Fading Saints is purely for the Dervish speed. Pillar dropping for both. Magical now having two pillars, because why not? It helps to when the first one gets destroyed like that. And it's a good position from, from Scruffy, but he doesn't have an arc. He's kind of stuck in the corner, and Magical's closing in on his opponent. Scruffy oh. moving some of his units back, but the units at no the front arc. are fighting. Zephyrus and Centauris are, having a bit, are getting a field day here. It's no arc, and the Zentari have more damage than Zephyrs, so they are just able to out-damage their opponents. And the Magi here for Magical, keeping their losses low. Scruffy does not have any real reason to be back here. They they got to run. Got to take what units they have left and get out. The yeah, Dervish are stopped. Side. So very there least. is that. At the very least, they dealt maybe a bit of damage, but did not ultimately do much as Scruffy is able to take them out. The Magical just completely bodied Scruffy's army. Yeah, that was just such a great fight. Getting the arc, even though the pillar came down first for Scruffy, he he didn't have enough uh, didn't have any enough area to for all his for all his his efforts to attack everything. Just kind of stuck in a bit of a ball, while Magical was able to spread out perfectly and get that huge arc to make all his units attack and just get a huge advantage in that fight. Now they're taking advantage of that advantage, splitting yep. up, taking some pyre, taking some harassment around the expansions. And not let, not requiring that their forces are all in one spot, which that's a great place to be. Yeah, that's how it really you make sure you're going to win the game, right? You can continuously expand, but it's all about splitting up your armies. If your main army can fight his main army, and on top of that, you can have some uh, some units go out on sides and kill their bases, you're going to be so far ahead. And behind this, Magical will need to move out and keep getting his advantages. Those Atari can't do much, and Scruffy smartly just splits up his army. He doesn't need to send his O army to defend this. Enough Zentari to chase away the, the Zephyrs. I mean, Zephyrs to chase away the Zentari. Magical does not care. They they like they know the base is there. They don't care enough to kill it that they're going to lose the Zentari in the process. 
They just know, okay, this is a target that I can keep picking on until it's gone. Oh, even a dervish come in. And at this point, that's enough army to get those efforts unless they're perfectly microed. But instead, the dervish just want to go for the moat kills while those entire take care of that small force that was there to that. And the dervish have their speed. They can they can spin in and out of everything. everything. Well, they spun in, got some workers out, spun out, and that's going to be the prelude to magical harassing from, or attacking from the left side. Yeah, Scruffy's in a bit of a tough spot at this point. He's trying to defend everything, but magical just have complete map control, even getting down the tower that Scruffy really needed to get out his own map control. And yeah, the knowing, map, like, magical, magical, to... magical right now. We've got full half the map. Scruffy has vision of maybe a quarter of it. Uh, well, another fight coming in, and... Again, magical coming oh. from both angles. Has so many shards and the Halwars. There's Scruffy's the tech. army is all, Zephyr's and all, Zedtar, all Zephyr's left. I mean, they can shoot up, but again, they don't deal that much damage for cost. Ooh, not when you're dealing with Halwars and Sharu, which pretty much cap hard count. Well, Halwars for sure hard counted them. Yeah, that's a, that's Sharu. a line. This time, though, Scru Scruffy does have the arc, but those he's sitting at the fire of the flanks that's glassing over all his units. And the full surround might not be enough at this point. The Howlers are moving back, getting out of range. As those Zatarka is effort doing the damage. Those Sharu shot so much awe strikes at everything dealing the damage. And Scruffy knows when he's in and out. And that's the end of this winner's final. We're moving into the, to this loser's final next. Congratulations, Magical. Because yeah. that was a hard fought fight.